right guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I was at work today and I've been doing some furniture stripping, which is kind of the miserable side of what I do for a, for a living. So it got me thinking, um, obviously this is a long way down the road, but uh, the car has got to be all stripped back to bare metal. Um, this car was originally in white, 050 white, and someone sprayed it blue. And uh, so there is a lot of paint on there that needs coming off. I'll give you a close-up in a sec of this uh, trunk lid. Uh, but I wanted to give you uh, an idea of what uh, the stripper available today in the States will do. Now, from my understanding, um, I think about 18 months ago, two, two years ago, methylene chloride strippers were banned in the United States right across the whole country, not just California, because someone decided to lock themselves in a bathroom and do some stripping and I think he died but anyway very unfortunate but uh, the strippers available to now, today uh, f from my experience are not as good they do work quite well especially the Jasco one on furniture lacquers and uh, um, things of that nature shellacs uh, run into a few different difficult uh, finishes with this new stripper but uh, generally they, we can get by you know still stinks to high heaven but uh, I wanted to show you how effective or not effective it is going to be on stripping this car paint off. Um, let me give you a close up and show you what we're dealing with. Okay, this is an area on the trunk lid that it's chipped off, but the thickness of the paint on here, I mean, it's so thick, they've piled straight on top, probably got some filler in different areas, but they've piled up, it's, it's, it's so thick that uh, um, obviously that's going to come off. It started to craze and crack under the load and the flex and the finish is obviously failing. Um, so I'll show you what we're going to do today, a little experiment. Uh, what I've done, I've sectioned off two sections of the, the uh, trunk lid, uh, approximately uh, 12 by 12 foot square uh, each section. And I'm going to see how this Jasco does. Um, I'm not picking on Jasco because it's a good product on furniture and and it does well and it may well do okay on this but uh, i'm not holding out too much hope obviously some shops take their cars and have them be blasted or or whatever you know walnut blast or whatever they do i don't know but i'm not uh, going to do that because the first of all i don't want to strip the car down to every single nut and bolt anyway and i don't want to do it because it creates a bit of a mess in of itself as well um so it's all hands for me, hand hand stripping, and we've got to figure out the right way. Now, I don't think it's uh, viable to strip it with chemicals because uh, a gallon of this stuff now in California will run you about $50, which is a lot of money. It didn't used to be as expensive as that, but and it doesn't work as well. All right, just pour off some in this clean pot here. It's a pretty nice day today. It's about 65 degrees out. It's not cold. You will certainly don't want to do this in the cold weather and it not it not in the hot weather either really and certainly not in this direct sunlight because it'll just dry out pretty much instantly so from my i've been doing furniture restoration for over 36 years and in the uk and in um, america and you always want to keep it wet you don't want to let it dry out i mean to be honest with you, i've read instructions on the cans and they say to paint a good amount on and leave it for oh, half hour, 45 minutes. Or, but what you'll find is that that will just dry out and it will just go hard. And that's no good. So right, we'll do our stopwatch here. Um, that's running because obviously I've got to edit and things like that. So I want, want you to get a fair example. So we'll just keep it nice and wet. Stipply, all that business. Now... I can tell you right now, the original stripper I used to use, which was by Rust-Oleum Aircraft Stripper, would have already started bubbling this finish, I can tell you that. And I'm stippling it. Normally you get some movement in finish in the lacquer. Within a minute or so you'll start to see bubbling evidence. But this... We'll give it a fair shot. So let me zoom in. As I say, this isn't a cheap product. So you've got to take that into consideration. 
at $50 a gallon and also the god awful smell of it so you should never do this inside a closed environment and I've got these lightweight gloves on these are not really appropriate for this I get I've got good quality stripper gloves but I don't intend getting this on my hands and obviously you should wear a mask but I'm outside here and talking to you so we'll get away with it for the moment stippling now if those of you that have used paint stripper like I say in the UK and it was probably still available called Nitromores it was that was the one we used to use and that was really good stripper but that was 30 odd years ago when I was back there and I found various greens is a good stripper over here and just go is a good stripper but like I say as the laws changed the strippers had to not their fault it's just uh, nature of the beast isn't it so that's uh, over two minutes now now I did do a video not on this channel but I did a video of or with the original stripper stripping a fender that I got and I can tell you right now it was bubbling already uh, and it scraped off beautiful right down to bare steel with one or two coats of this and I'm seeing literally no evidence of movement yet no blue paint on the brush okay square number two here again a one foot square move that off there for a minute I'm doing the YouTube channel, but I'm certainly not endorsing any particular product or getting paid. Certainly not. Um, not into all that. I just want to show you what tools I've researched and found that work. And this is a new tool to me. I haven't used it yet. Well, I tell a lie. I used it for about three minutes the other day when it came in just to see what it was like. And I thought we'll have to do a test on this. Direct comparison to the stripper. Now, you've probably heard of it. It's this, this thing. This is a SCT um, uh, removal tool from Eastwood. And again, like I say, I'm not endorsing it particularly. I just want to put it to a test on camera and see what it does. Uh, it's got the 40 grit stripping wheel on at the moment. That's for paint, rust, filler, and all that. I bought a wire brush attachment and a scaling brush. I'll probably buy others. There's conditioning discs and all that. And what I saw of it, it looked like it done a pretty decent job. So it's got a fair weight to it. Apparently, it doesn't generate too much heat, which obviously you don't want on a panel. You get there. You don't want to generate too much heat, do you? So, I'm going to leave that cooking off for a bit over there. Um, phone should be fine now. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so let's have a look at this. warm to the touch probably nothing more than on a normal not even a hot summer's day you know so it's not getting it too hot we're down to bare metal here in the meantime i'm going to go and dot some more stripper on there another coat on there make sure that's staying nice and wet it is starting to register on the brush speed it up a bit So obviously the blue looks like primer, uh, uh, maybe some filler there, and then the white, the 050 white, and then their primer and maybe some other kind of product, that, that grey line there. Um, you can you can feel the ridge there. I mean, it's an incredible amount of paint on there. I think whoever painted this had shares in a paint company. Obviously, it's going to be a graft to get all that paint off. It definitely seems the way to go bloody noisy so i put that another coat on that we've had approximately another five seven minutes i'd say that scraper it probably has taken more off but let's see yeah it's definitely getting more on the second go round but again it's not even got to the white 
definitely get it's getting under it. But <laughs> there's the it's the clear coat on the looks of it. Oh blimey. So I'm not gonna carry much on, but you get the idea. It's really it's quite ineffective. So number one, it's expensive, fifty dollars a gallon. It smells, right? And it's not getting underneath the paint. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. So going by this experiment, stripper is certainly not the way to go. Let me think of an analogy. It's about as effective as walking in the boxing ring against Mike Tyson armed with a wet daffodil. That's what I think. Yeah, anyway, this however, at least you've got half a chance of getting it off, you know. And I say that's, that's, tell you what, just for a laugh, they gave us a conditioning disc, nice and clean now. I'm going to put what's called the conditioning disc on there and see how that brings that metal up. And I'm going to treat this metal with the uh, acid etch so it don't get flash rusted while we wait um, for the job to carry on, you know, so... Beautiful. Nice job. So, like I say, it's no easy task stripping a car, but uh, just chipping away at it one panel at a time, that's what I'll do. Because the project, obviously, of this size, you've got so much to do. Um, depending on your mood, uh, you can do this, I guess. <laughs> okay, it's uh, another day, actually. Um, I... Uh, as you see, I've uh, started stripping this side with the SCT sander, or the, the, the stripper wheel, with the aggressive number 40 stripping wheel on it. I'm still working with the stripper product. I gave up on the wood uh, Jasco stripper. I think that's more orientated towards wood. And so I went to the aircraft stripper by uh, a clean strip. Um, it's uh, particularly formulated for metal. And it's supposed to work in about 45 minutes. It definitely is better. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, it definitely is better. It's still a little slow to really start to soften that uh, main blue paint that I've got on here before you can even get down to the white. Um, what I find is better, I got a uh, DA sander with some aggressive uh, 80 or 60 grit paper on it and just broke through that clear coat layer to enable the stripper to really start biting. Seems that clear coat is incredibly tough. Um, so break that off, you know, with an aggressive sander and then apply the stripper. It seems to work better. Um, let me get you in close here and I'll show you how it's looking. As you can see, we've still got a lot of blue on there. Um, this one's been hit with an aircraft stripper again. Uh, like I say, broke the clear coat and then hit it with an aircraft stripper. It's definitely softened it. Um, you need a good stiff scraper because if it's too flexible you won't get underneath but you can see it's still extraordinarily tough to get off you can't let this stuff dry out as i say and i'm outside on a nice spring day so it's ideal temperature uh, you can see there's an incredible amount of paint on there what i'm thinking you see at this stage of the game um, is to break that clear coat and then just carry on with the SCT uh, remover because this, I think, even though it does a lot better, I think it's really, really not up to the task, to be honest with you. You know, along with the mess of it, the smell and the cost, yeah, I think you're better off with the uh, SCT myself. Now, let me show you what I've done with the SCT so far. Look at that. So you can see that took, I mean, it's still hard work, don't get me wrong. Down towards this back area, you can see. Now, I've introduced no stripper to this area whatsoever on this side. 
so let me show you i'll try and do a little small section here and you'll see me chasing the edge and working my way down as you know this is extremely thick uh, but i think it does a good job it's bloody hard work but uh let me show you As you can see, it takes some time, but uh, if you were just stripping a one, uh, you know, a single color car, you know, that had only been, uh, had one spray job on it, you would see it's probably take half the time, but I'm just working against a lot here. Let's blast that little corner there. Well, there you have it. It does a good job. Um, now, let's back off here. I was asked on uh, the group by Gosta, I think it was, I uh, asked the question, why are we even stripping this back down, you know? Uh, but, we, I mean, with some cars, obviously, you can give them a key sand and recoat, I'm sure. But with this, as I say all along, it's got so much on there. It's deformed some of the body lines. And the only real way to do a good job on it is to strip all that off. And just like the furniture game, you want to you wanna get that finish off with as little disturbance of the base material as possible, you know. Um, now with an extremely aggressive sander, for instance, say you put a 36 grit on and you start getting down to the metal, then you run in the danger of cutting into the metal itself, you know, and distorting it and causing you problems. So... With this machine, I find it's a really good medium. It's aggressive enough, but that, that especially that stripping wheel, what looks like a kind of a popcorn almost, you know, uh, those um, Rice Krispie bars. It doesn't cut into the metal, or very minimally, you know. And also, uh, as you know, on these edges, on some of these rolled edges here, if you started sanding aggressively on these edges, you're going to thin metal out and then cause all manner of problems. And on some cars with not as heavy a go steel, you could even probably blow through it and then you've got all manner of problems. And then, of course, there's the heat issue, making sure you don't distort the panel with too much excessive heat. Um, so all that being said, I think this is a really good uh, uh, solution to stripping the paint off. Now, uh, obviously with that broad wheel, you're not going to get into all the detail areas. I think when I get to those areas, I'm going to use, um, probably pick up a little cheap, you know, media blaster, just to do those little detail edges, you know. Um, so like I say, it's a big combination, isn't it? If you don't have as much material on, I think the stripper would work. Uh, but with this, uh, I'm going to need this brute to get all that off. What I'm thinking, because you know it's like with people on flat surfaces, right, when they're painting, or the same with furniture on tabletops and things, on the flat surfaces, because there's not much risk of running, they tend to load it up too much and then start piling it on. But what I noticed, the little stripping I've done on the side panels and the door on that welding job, I don't think there was as much material on there. So I think this is probably some of the worst, all the flat areas, possibly the hood, uh, the engine hood is going to be like this, hopefully not the roof, but uh, the doors and all the sides, I don't think you're going to have as much material on, but we'll see when we get to that, that place. Now, 
After this stage, what I'm going to do is hit it with an 80 DA just to scuff it up to give a good key for the epoxy primer. And then once that's epoxy primer, then that can sit down my wood shop and be ready uh, for the next stages, you know, uh, checking uh, body lines and dents and all that, what have you. Again, let me know what you think about this little dent here because the framework of the trunk lid is hiding access to that. Uh, and my whole goal on this car is to do as best of repairs as possible to use an absolute minimal filler. That's my real, that's my real goal. Just as, again, a parallel to the furniture game. You're using wood in patches and stuff, and it's got to be a real tight fix. You don't want to go bunging filler in there, do you? Because that's a foreign, uh, foreign uh, thing to the wood that you have to deal with later on in the finishing stage. And obviously too thick a filler you can cause problems and you kind of just don't want that do you okay so after all that um got a large amount of the hood uh, the rear trunk lids uh, stripped and i flipped it over and i'll show you what i found so you know i spent a lot of time on this mincing around but if you can see on this edge here see someone's done some brazing here and uh, difficult to see but it's a little sloppy all the way along there's a series of spot brazing along and it's warped the panel here a little bit it could probably be corrected uh, but those brazing um, marks or welds I don't really care for and uh, I don't know what's gone on here whether he's reskinned the hood or something or or done whatever but anyway what I've decided to do is abandon this trunk lid after all that because I've got another one. I've got another one from a pick and pull I picked up ages ago actually, and this is in really nice shape. Uh, and really good shape, and you can see the edge, that folded edge there is really nice. So I'm just gonna abandon ship on the other one and go for this. I'll have to obviously drill different mount holes for the 6.3. I'll fill this one in. This I probably will use and uh, mount the emblem obviously the trunk handle is the same and then the uh this emblem i believe is the same i'll check it and this is coming up really fast this is more of your standard amount of paint that took me about 10 15 minutes to strip that so after all that everybody uh i'm abandoning that previous one in the end anyway so anyway um it is what it is at least i've got another spare one all right so thanks a lot for watching guys this is a kind of a re-edit i did uh, edit up this video earlier but i wanted to uh, give the stripper a really good go especially with that uh, aircraft stripper and depending on your situation i think it may well work all right you know and just do the job but in this one i don't think it's going to cut it so i think the mechanical removal with this machine and a uh, excuse me so with all the edges i'll probably do you know all the little details a little media blaster a little portable one little mini setup i'll probably do that and uh because i'm itching to get to this stage i'm a long way off of it but something like this will give me some practice to see what we're going to do down the line and in the, maybe in the next few weeks i'll get some epoxy primer on this in the meantime i'll shoot some zinc etch on it so it locks it and seals it off and it kept indoors anyway obviously so anyway uh thanks a lot for watching guys appreciate it uh please hit subscribe share and like button if you like what you see and i will see you in the next one all right take care guys bye bye